Don't I know you, sir? Don't believe so. I haven't been here in many years. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Just passing through. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir, it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true. Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? Is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawman who crossed him. It was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. Kid had a big chip on his shoulder and a hair-trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinking Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that some bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny feeling. Funny, ha ha? No, Steve. The other kind of funny. You heard Pat. You need to stay here and keep an eye on the road. That's not fair. We're missing all the fun. I knew those two morons would never let me through. I had no choice. Who's that? Jesus! Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Oh yeah. I heard the shots and I knew I had to move fast. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. Fire at will! Spread out, goddammit! They're coming from the rear! I decided to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did. As the governor of New Mexico was paying for the kid's apprehension, Garrett was able to hire every gun hand in Lincoln County. Yeah. 
One of them reached the water tower. Not a bad idea. It would be a turkey shoot from up there. Luckily, these shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make a few bucks. Then, I heard a friendly voice yelling at me from the window. Back door! We got we'll cover you! Try aiming, you idiots! Truth be told, Stand things weren't door. much better behind the house. numbers in half, but that just made the ones that were left twice as mad. <laughs> It was a bit of a slog, but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. And like that, you I was inside. Dead, None the worse for wear. I passed Dirty Dave. How about that? Huh? And upstairs, like that? I found Billy and Charlie Baldry. I'll do you myself. Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. Telling you Garrett's men were dropping like flies, but they just kept on coming. Where the hell Garrett get to? He's missing on left! That's when Charlie got hit. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side! He 
Time to cut and run. They got a gallon, Billy shouted. Get the horses and bring them round back. I'll draw their attention. He directed that order at me. And I thought, why the hell do I have to do it? But I went anyway. Dumbass said I was back then. Many would have fled in my place. But I had that false sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack here. What are you saying, old man? Jack is just joshing with you. Yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, please continue. Please call me Silas, ma'am. Now, uh, where was I? Heading for the barn. Gotta cut you a new one. Making my way past the castle of fallen foes. Sounds like Garrett hired a whole regiment of hired guns. Yeah, and just when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless bastards would pop up. Finally, I had the stables within my reach. And that's when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked-on tin star. You read that in a dime novel? It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake. Killed him. 
in a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that Penny Dreadful said? No, boy. That ain't what I meant when I said I met Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reached those damn stables. Just stepped inside, and BAM! Uh, last thing I heard was Garrett's voice. That's not Billy. And go on, how did it end? End? Boy, that was just the beginning. So what happened? Did Garrett arrest you? Yeah, after I came to. Bastard had clocked me with his colt. And the kid surrendered? When he realized there was no getting out of there alive. So they locked you up in Lincoln? Indeed they did. Sentenced me to hang right along with the kid. It's important to know that I was only riding with Billy so I could find the bastard I was after. He was with John Kinney's gang, and they were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, all I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape, too. My first order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean-ass shotgun. I saw Billy through the window and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? <laughs> Hell yeah. That scattered gun was like a double-barreled howitzer. It could blow a man clear off his feet. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. The kid's escape raised a huge ruckus. Guards were everywhere looking for him. Can't let the kid get away! Anybody see him? I had to jump from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could, but... Some of that wood was slippery as hell. The whole town was up in on it. Suddenly, I was a fugitive. How the hell did this kid escape? Garrett's gonna kick our ass! I can't have gotten far! Better. I can't have gotten around this 
So that bastard you were after, what did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever going to find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. I tried to be stealthy and sneak my way past. This town doesn't have a moment's peace. Hell, if they weren't all waiting for me. Apparently, some of them thought I was Billy. shared a certain similarity in build and color. I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean-ass shotgun. It was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. Get out I knew I needed to find a horse. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beasts. We prize them too high, if you ask me.
But where was the kid while you were busy getting shot at? Gone. And that's when it occurred to me why Billy set me free. So I could be a hapless decoy and draw attention while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. Because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. Meanwhile, Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean-ass shotgun. Anyway, it was me or them, and the only way forward led me straight to the mission. But the cards were dealt, and I had no choice but to play them. I found what I was looking for. The stables on the edge of town. I guess Billy saved your ass, taking out Bob Ollinger the way he did. Billy didn't kill Bob. Well, sure he did. He dispatched him right after he shot Deputy Bell. No, sir. Because Bob came right up behind me, angry as hell that Billy had lit out. Hello, Bob, I said. I think you better let me go. And he says, I don't think so, boy. Not with my shotgun. So we stood there in the middle of the street, 
Eyeball to eyeball. He intended to kill me, and I knew I had no choice but to defend myself. I killed him in a fair fight. Everybody saw I had no damn choice. Well, Lincoln got a might depopulated that day. Pat Garrett gunned down Billy three months later. So where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico. Until I realized nobody was looking for me. I ended up taking a job at the Rurales. The Mexican Rurales? I was hired to help them track down the Cowboys. The most vicious outlaw gang in Cochise County? Curly Bill Brocious? Johnny Ringo? Led by old man Clanton himself. They must have paid you a pretty penny to take them hombres on. Not really. But truth be told, I had my own reasons for going after those boys. So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. And yes, he was working for old man Clanton. Hey, fucking run! I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! I did my best to help those poor passengers. Moments later, the attackers were dead, and I checked a stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks weren't hiding more bandits. Was that all of them, or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attacked from on high like Apaches all did. Yeah. They were appearing great numbers from above and rained down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground and whatever else they had. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere, and there never seemed to be an end to them. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. See, at the time, I was still pretty green and would often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was the cowboy. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong, and I was determined to have my revenge. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to find my way past these other assholes first. Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. 
I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. Finally, they managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, the odds of my survival seemed pretty slim. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. I ran ahead as if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be if Clanton and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking, going up against a gang like this? I just kept running, not knowing where the hell I was going. And that's when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven, I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. The old weapon next to him supplied me with some much needed ammunition. once told me it was more important to be lucky than good, and he would know. And imagine my surprise when I found a fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune even the odds and bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunted to become the hunter. <laughs> All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jack. I was done running. And the old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wildcat. My fury knew no bounds. It was finally time for that old man to pay for his sins. tell you that was the longest uphill climb of my entire damn life. Well, one of the longest. There was that one time I was pursuing Frank James, Jesse James' brother. Jesse James? Perhaps we could talk about that one later. Now where was I? 
Right. I had old man clan in my sights. Everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon, but it was just me. Thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon, but it was just me. one of the cowboys made it out of there alive and told Ike and Billy Clanton that it wasn't a Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps, and that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the Old K Corral. A few weeks after that dust up at the OK Corral, I was still after Johnny Ringo. I had tracked him and the cowboys to their hideout at a sawmill, and they were loaded for bear. So what exactly did Johnny Ringo do to piss you off? Well, him and that other bastard. Roscoe Bob Bright? Yep. They both deserve to die, and I promise I'll tell you why. First, I need to tell you about the cowboy's new boss, Curly Bill Brocious. Herb's coming! Get ready, boys. <laughs> Curly Bill took charge of the cowboys upon the old man's demise. And after that gunfight at the OK Corral, the Clantons wanted revenge.
They murdered Morgan Earp and grievously wounded his older brother, Virgil. Wyatt and Doc went on what became known as the Vendetta Ride, hunting those outlaws down. So when I showed up, that's who they thought I was. Killers around every corner, all wearing red bandanas. That's how the cowboys identified each other, and I was beginning to wish I had one myself. I wasn't about to let Ringo walk away on scathe, and that's what drove me forward. They say that Ringo was infernally fast. I hardly saw anyone faster, boy. Certainly not Wyatt Earp. That man was all hat and no cap. <gasps> Herb wasn't much of a match for him, but Doc Holliday might have taken him. That longer should have kept his nose out of it. They never charged anyone for the murder of Morgan Herb. But everybody knew that Kirby shot him in the back. That was common knowledge. Yeah, maybe so. But Ringo had nothing to do with it. He was just being loyal to a friend. Is that what you call it? Being loyal. Well, to get to that loyal friend, I had to pass by some buzz saws as big as a man. Sir, I have a question. What's that, Dwight? After old man Clanton died, why didn't his son take over the Cowboys? Because I Clanton was dumber than a box of rocks and a yellow belly to boot.
where was I? Taking down the entire cowboy gang single-handed. Indeed I was, Jack. It wasn't easy as those boys had good cover. Parks everywhere, piles of lumber, and God knows what else for people to hide behind. That really was one hell of a sawmill. Quite an impressive operation. Was Curly Bill? Did you see him? I'm about to get to that, Ben. Patience. I'm painting a picture here. There was this beautiful waterfall and a crystal clear stream that led to a verdant valley that was truly. Consider your picture painted. What happened next? Well, finally, the bastards that were still alive made a last stand.
Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo, and his compadres took off into the lumber yard, and I followed after. saying they ran. Cowardice was not in Ringo nor Curly Bill's nature. No, sir. I never said they were running scared. They just wanted me on the open. Just gave me no choice but to take his life. But Ringo was nowhere to be found. I knew you didn't kill Ringo, because he was found dead in a different location altogether. To this day, his killer is still unknown. Indeed. It took me a few months before I finally tracked his ass to West Turkey Creek Canyon. Sir, I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. Oh! Sorry I had to ruin the legend for you, boy. But the legend ain't always true. Doc Holliday had nothing to do with the death of Johnny Ringo. 